Excuse glare! Huh. It must be too high level to listen to me. Wait, what's that? You don't learn glare! You have eyes! Why can't you glare? Oh, what's that? Only snake Pokemon can learn glare. Is this true? Dear God. I haven't gone off the deep end because the deep end has come to me. I see all and know all Pokemon lore, even learned a few Pokemon moves. I'm currently channeling my inner Lipard. But did you know that Glare and Leer are different moves in the games? Like, yeah, I knew that from the beginning because I'm always me, the human locked in with my immense knowledge of typical things. I was definitely not told that by anyone. <laughs> But just to be kind, I'm going to explain it to you anyway, you beautiful people who adore me. The move glare goes like this. The target is transfixed with terrifying, sharp eyes. The target is frightened into paralysis. Or at least, that's how our visual depictions of the move feel. From anime to manga, it's typically just a large glare, possibly being large, piercing red eyes. So why couldn't any Pokémon learn this? I mean, last time I checked, most Pokémon have eyes. I even got a video about some of the coolest eyes right here. So why is it that only snakes learn it? And yes, I know Helioptile isn't a snake, but it is a basilisk lizard, and a basilisk in western folklore is a large snake. Blame Harry Potter. But it's the Japanese name of this move that really opens this can of bug snakes, which is what I call worms. The Japanese name of the move glare is Snake Glare. So why is it just named glare in English? That's the real question here. However, Here's the kicker. In Japanese, the move Leer is actually called Glare. So what's the difference? What even is a Leer? I know what it is from Pokemon because I've seen the anime and in the game the deck states the user gives the opposing Pokemon an intimidating look that lowers the defense stat. Which is almost the same basic idea. It's mechanically different but visually the same. Both are eye-based moves that seem to debuff the opponent. Yet lately they've started to try and differentiate them with newer dex entries for Glare, going, the user intimidates the target with the pattern on its belly to cause paralysis. Are they trying to get away from the eyes and going to a pattern on the belly? But this makes the move even more of an Arbok exclusive, as its belly pattern resembles a scary face glaring you down. I mean, and faces have eyes, so yeah. And I mean, in Gen 1, this was Arbok box signature move. But now, all of the snakes know it. Even Zygarde. Even Dunsparce. Even me! What? No. But I'm... You're not a snake. <sighs> uh, but yeah, uh, why are they only just now giving it an Arbok-like description? What's up? I mean, it's called glare, which is a real-life thing. And if you didn't know, glaring is where you stare in an angry or fierce way. However, there is another definition of glare, where light is reflected and shines with a strong or dazzling light. So, is light reflecting off of the patterned belly the idea that they're going for? Uh, either way, it seems like the North American localization team seems to have just taken this move the wrong way originally, back when it was our box signature move, but is only just now going back and trying to fix the description of it? And yet, the animations still don't match up. Come on, localizers, just own up and realize you named it wrong. But even ignoring the naming issue, isn't it weird that snakes in popular media all have this magical sort of power to hypnotize or paralyze creatures? Just think about it. It's much more common than you'd think. It's Disney's fault for me, with the Jungle Book's Ka and Robin Hood's Hiss, both of which sport snakes with hypnotic eyes. And I mean, heck, a snake convinced Eve to do the unthinkable. There had to have been some softcore hypnotism going down, clearly. So humans have had this association with snakes for a very long time. Do snakes in the real world paralyze creatures in fear? Why would scaring prey into staying still be helpful? Actually, you may have been affected by this yourself. You ever feel a chill run down your spine and your body doesn't want to move? Something so scary that you just stop. This is because of the big Fs of life. Fight or flight. But there's a secret third one, freeze. Actually, actually, there's a bunch of Fs. They just keep adding more and more. There's like six now with fawn, flood, fatigue, flop. Yeah, I'm blowing your mind right now. But the third one is what we're looking at, freeze. We all understand fighting or fleeing as they are the most reasonable choices, especially when the threat is a physical threat. But freezing, why would stopping and not responding to a threat be an evolutionary advantage? 
A uh, deer in the headlight situation seems like it always ends in a car hitting you. That's a bad example because humans love to ignore and be different in terms of animal instincts though. Uh, but yeah, a freezing response seems somewhat wrong. Very, very small brain. Wouldn't it be better to get a head start and dash away from the potential threat immediately? Well, yes, but also, no, it might be a big brain strategy after all. Many predators, especially those with small brains themselves, react to movement. And if you do abruptly go rigid, there's a chance that the T-Rex that you just spotted won't notice you. This is a funny joke because the popular movie franchise, Jurassic Park, thought that the T-Rex was a movement-based predator, but new research is figuring out that it was actually kind of similar to a hawk basically able to see very well and find prey very easily from a distance. But the idea is the same. Think of freezing as a state of defensive preparation. The body gets the same jolt of adrenaline that readies fight or flight, but the brain has calculated that at least for this very moment, your best odds of survival come with no action at all. So it's not actually that snakes hypnotize their prey, it's their prey that hypnotize themselves to avoid the snake's movement-based gaze. Animals act on instinct, and when something is different than normal, they don't like it. They are creatures of habit, after all. Similarly, animals that learn to abuse this fact that one of their predators is movement-based tend to excel, so evolution loves them more, meaning that trait gets passed on. I mean, think of the possum. Playing dead seems like a dangerous strategy to use, but I guess enough animals get grossed out or confused by it playing dead that the possum has lived on to pass on its dying genes. However, snakes in particular have a small advantage during this freeze phase. Snakes don't have to blink. The freeze stage is all about each animal's brain trying to find the next best action. To rapidly strike at the movement it sees, versus to flee at a moment's notice. And during this time, the brain is hyper-focused, emotionally and mentally exhausted in mere moments from the sheer energy needed to think this rapidly. And blinking during this moment, well, that's a disadvantage. That's a weakness. The fact that snake eyelids are fixed is sort of planned by evolution. Snakes have an eye cap allowing them to never blink or ever open their eyes. They have a clear covering that they shed with their skin and sleep with no change in expression, meaning they are really good at poker. Snakes will always win a staring contest, and when watching them stare down their prey, spectators seem to think their prey is mesmerized by the snake instead of just confused by the lack of emotional intention in the snake's eyes. There is no intent the prey can see. Does it want to strike to kill? Is it aggressive? Is it not aggressive? Figuring all that out tends to be shown in its facial features. But the snake is merely glaring at you. It's just waiting for you to make a move, to strike. In the meantime, while you're frozen, it's still looking for you, getting closer, sensing you with its tongue. It will eventually find you. You can't stay perfectly still forever. So, when do you make your move? When do you flee? Ugh, how paralyzingly spooky. So, snake hypnosis is a myth that probably started because snakes are dangerous and their unblinking glare keeps you in a trance. A trance of the freeze before the flight. But funnily enough, snakes are easily hypnotized. In fact, we've seen it also in popular media with snake charmers and such. Oh, how the turns have tabled. But. Uh, this snake charming thing is also false. Uh, the snake isn't hypnotized, it's just defensively wiggling against the snake charmer's flute, hoping to not be grabbed by them. How fun. And there you go. Now you know. For more of me looking too much into specific Pokemon things, be sure to subscribe. And of course, never stop using your noggin.